Hello everyone, my name is Laura and you're watching the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. And today I have a video recommendation that I can't recommend enough. It's called The Church of Tears and I have it in the description box for you to click on. Uh, please save it to watch later. It is a long video. I'll say it's three hours long, but it is worth watching. Uh, breaking it up into pieces if you can or watching it while you're cleaning the house but definitely bookmark it and I think it's something that every believer needs to watch. Um, so the Church of Tares uh, is a reference to the tares and the wheat in Matthew chapter 13 when Jesus is presenting a parable of the wheat and the tares and that the wheat and the, and the um, tares, they, they grow together. And um, that parable, you can read it, but um, it's important that as believers that we are wise to what is going on right now in the church as we're going through these end times. We're seeing an increase in deception and false teachers. And it's important that we have discernment and wisdom in these days and that we're praying to the Lord to reveal these truths to us. And so the tear, um, it says here in a commentary, it's probably a darnel, which is a type of weed that can hardly be distinguished from wheat until the head matures. In agricultural settings, sowing darnel in someone else's wheat field was a way for enemies to destroy someone's livelihood catastrophically. It pictures Satan's efforts to deceive the church by mingling his children with God's. In some cases, making it impossible for believers to discern the true from the false. And you can read this parable in chapter 13, verse 24. Um, and so just like that, we see Satan sowing tares in the church. And there has been this movement, which it's like the church growth movement. Um, people might call it different things, the, the purpose-driven church, where there's this push for numerical growth over quality where fun and entertainment is prioritized over a true gospel message, where instead of the full gospel, they're only uh, preaching parts of the gospel like salvation and grace, but omitting you know, the fact that we're sinners in need of a savior. They're omitting the blood of Jesus and the cross, things that aren't palatable uh, to the world. They're taking those things out in order to gain growth. And you can't sacrifice the quality of the scripture to attain quality, uh, quantity of people. Yes, we want to reach the lost, but we have to preach the pure word. We have to preach the real message of truth and not, you know, give way to gimmicks. And um, it's very important that we follow the word and that we're teaching the children the word in kids church and that we have a church that models Acts 2.42, a church that is teaching uh, the word and has communion and fellowship and prayer. That's what the church is for. And then we outreach by going out and spreading the gospel and, and speaking to those around us. But um, it's important too, there's this push for uh, churches to have a one person visionary that people follow and that is actually not what the Bible shows as the biblical model for a church which is a plurality of overseers and um, I can't say all this better than the video itself um, so if you could just please take the, take a watch and there's so much information in that and, and what people say um, is there is definitely this push today to see, you know, people teaching acceptance and tolerance and love. And they teach things the wrong way. Um, there is this deception also of um, having something that's true and then turning it just, you know, in the wrong context in order to bring confusion. You know, you'll have this it's almost like boiling the frog, you know, where, where there's this gradual turning into deception and um, it makes it so that people tolerate more and more of it because uh, if, if people were just to come out in the church and say, uh, this is what we're doing, we're doing all these evil things, people would be like, oh my gosh, that's terrible, we're not going to do that. But what they do is they, they introduce something and it's just a little bit off and 
people with discernment will uh, pick up on it and they'll say, I don't know, there's something about that message that just didn't seem quite right. I'm not sure what it was. Um, and I think a lot of that type of feeling comes when truth might be taught but applied to a wrong context or it might be something that is a truth that is twisted um, or it could be something where there are implications that are spoken that aren't correct and we start to pick up on those little things and we need to pray that the Lord will help us to hear the truth and discern good from a mixture of good and evil. Holiness is absolutely uh, a part of flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. And we should be pursuing godliness and holiness and sanctification. And God works on us in gentle ways. He doesn't expect us to get it all right, right out the gate. Um, he will gently, and and in his time as he, he works with us, lead us more into his righteousness and the more we submit to his ways the more we will see the evidence of fruit in our life grow because all believers have fruit but not all believers have the same quantity of fruit and we do need to surrender to the Lord so that we can produce more fruit and part of that is about you know uh, dying to ourself and you know crucifying the flesh and living in Christ and it's worth it because whatever we feel like we're losing what we gain in Christ is worth it and it's so much greater um, so it's very important that we are in a church that is following the word that isn't twisting the scripture and isn't like misleading people by applying truths to improper context um, any confusion is from the enemy so if there's a leader and they're confusing you or they're manipulating you or they're blackmailing you, that is not from the Lord. And we need to get out from that leadership and seek um, a church that has a plurality of overseers where there's accountability, people who are genuinely seeking the Lord, people who are praying, people who have... Um, lives that the the Bible outlines for leadership um, as far as like Jesus modeled leadership as a servant leadership he served people he washed the disciples feet and he led by example and he expects us to be servant leaders as well that we don't lead under compulsion or sordid gain but that we lead through loving people and submitting to the Lord and having a life that is a testimony of faith, a life that is devoted to prayer. And when we have that type of leadership, you can feel it because the presence of the Holy Spirit is there and he will resonate in your soul. You'll, you'll know pure truth when you see it. And so as believers, we have to be wise. We have to seek the Lord. We can't be ignorant to the ways of the devil. We have to be uh, able to see the wolves amongst the sheep. We have to be able to discern the wheat from the darnell. And I love how it said in that, that probably a darnell um, could hardly be distinguished until the head fully matures. And that's the way it is sometimes. Sometimes we're in a, a place and we feel like we're amongst other sheep. But then as that head matures, we start to be able to see that there are wolves in the flock. And we have to respond accordingly with truth and love. And we need to pray to the Lord for guidance and timing and for the right words at the right time. That he will lead us. He wants us to be on that narrow path. And he wants to guide us. We have to pray for the boldness to do the right thing, to say the right thing, to reach out to people with the love of the flock that is amongst the, the wolves that need to be protected. So it's important that we speak out in truth. The enemy, he wants to shame us. He wants us to hide. He wants us to keep the, the truth of um, what people are getting away with as, as hidden. But evil does need to be exposed. And we're in a season right now where the Lord is exposing evil. And evil within the church, unfortunately, is present. And 
I thank the Lord that he is revealing these things and I thank him for opening the believers eyes so that they can see and just I want to encourage people to speak boldly in love always do what the Lord is speaking for you to do don't be afraid to do what the Lord has called you to do if he's called you to do something that means he will supply the needs that you have to do that thing and it may feel like you're losing something initially but we can't focus on that feeling of loss. We have to instead keep our eyes on how the Lord is directing us and what he's asking us to do and to just be focused on that and to trust that the provision of the Lord is on that path. And so um, check out that video, please. Bookmark it, put it to watch later, Church of Tears. It's worth the watch. It's very good, very relevant for today. And um, if you're not in a situation where that feels like that, uh, is relevant. It might be relevant to somebody in your life that you know because a lot of churches are going down this path of deception and if you're aware of it you will recognize it when you see it and you can warn others and I think that that's important that we're aware. So just wanted to pass that along. Thanks.